Hello, I'm Richard Ayuadi, the internationally regarded face of Gadget Man. But for the next half hour of mould-shattering television, this face is going to pack its oversized bag and fly to foreign shores. Watch as I radically alter my persona. I'm briefly quelling my fear of leaving home in order to explore warmer climes. My stated goal is to show you the component parts of a triumphant weekend away, oh dear, with the minimum of minutage, coin and fan. Bang! Why have you brought me to Barcelona? I'm going to flip and run it down now. 7.5 million tourists fling themselves here every year. And while I instinctively reject majority verdicts, this level of popularity must be taken into account. As well as being in Spain, we're also in the capital of the Catalonia region, which has its own language and flag. If you plan your trip frugally, you can get here, sleep, munch and quaff for just £69 each for a whole weekend. Catalonia is where they invented chopper chops. And the last in this amazing series of compelling reasons is that they don't have a tooth fairy here. They have a tooth mouse. A tooth mouse? A tooth mouse. So why come to Istanbul at all? Istanbul, not Constantinople, is the eighth most popular tourist destination in the world and the only city on Earth that's spread across two continents as opposed to non-Earth-based cities straddling Europe and Asia. It's been the capital of four of my all-time favourite empires, Latin, Roman, Byzantine and my personal soft spot, Ottoman. Was once famous for having a reassuringly world-beating 1,400 public toilets. And if you holiday efficiently, costs can be contained. A budget weekend away here can be had for a prox 135 per person. So, why have you brought us to Iceland? Well, let me tell you now. Firstly, for the time poor or readily bored, Iceland condenses a lot of amazing scenery into a relatively small area. Secondly, for those with one or both eyes on fiscal stricture, it's much more affordable than it used to be. In fact, if you enjoy nothing but the cost-free Icelandic scenery, you could spend less than £200 each on your weekend away. Richard, you brought me to Marrakesh. Why? Well, I have some very good reasons. Tell me. First things first, Marrakesh is relatively cheap. You can get here, eat and sleep for as little as £87.50 each for a whole weekend. But that's not all. Despite being an insultingly short three and a half hours flight away, we're in a different continent and on the cusp of the Sahara Desert. And as if that shiz wasn't enough, Morocco is the world's largest exporter of tin sardines. So, Dickie. Yes, Chris. Here we are. We are here. You know I would go anywhere with you. I know. Why Vienna? Well, let me reward that earnest question with this answer. With around 2 million inhabitants, Vienna is home to roughly a quarter of Austria's population. And as if that fraction wasn't impressive enough, Vienna has also been voted the city with the best quality of life in the world four times. Something you would have thought could in no way be accurately surveyed. It was home to Mozart, Haydn, your boy Beethoven and your man Strauss, earning it the epithet City of Music. And that's pre-Ultravox, y'all. It was the birthplace of psychoanalysis, the sewing machine, slow motion, and the best souvenir in the history of all time. Of which more in the Junus, of course. Why have you brought me here? Well, Mel. It's a lovely thing, and I'm not dissing it, but yes. why? Well, Mel, I'll tell you why. We all know Paris as the Texan city made famous by Wim Wenders' cinematic Cri de Coeur. But there's actually another Paris closer to home, in a country called France, of all things. This Paris is home to two and a quarter million bods, who in turn jostle with 15 mil tourists a year, making Paris the third most visited city in the world. But none of these saps have mini-broken like we're about to mini-break. This photogenic capital is the birthplace of the bikini, the stethoscope and the pencil sharpener. And for cats who like to keep their arboreal game tight, half of the 470 thou trees in Paris are referenced and measured by order of the mayor of Paris himself. Obviously you didn't get my memo, I wanted to go to Hawaii. Why are we going to Copenhagen? Well, I'll tell you why. Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark. With a population of just under two mil, Copenhagen is the largest city in Scandinavia and, according to the massively chillaxed dudes at Lonely Planet, the coolest. 
we have Copenhagen to thank for Hans Christian Andersen, Sandy Totsvig, Lego, the pedal bin, and my old adversary, the pH scale. And if that wasn't enough to make you sit to the middle, the city topped the UN charts for the happiest place on earth. Thanks for having me here. Why are we here, Richard? Well, I'll tell you why. Moscow dropped onto the world scene about a millennium ago, and it's been invaded, besieged, or revolutionized at least once a century ever since. It was recently voted the most unfriendly city in the world, which immediately endears me to it. And mercifully, Russian children are taught not to smile at school because it's not charming. It's actually quite needy. Why Seville? Why have you taken me here? I'm going to tell you that now. The Andalusian capital Seville is the fourth biggest city in Spain and its largest inland river port. It's been ruled by the Romans, the Moors, and for the last 850 years and change, the Spanish of all people. And for those buffoons who like to get drunk on sun, Seville will scorch your back with 3,000 hours of sizzle a year, earning it the nickname the frying pan of Europe. So, Richard, why Venice? We're literally about to cut to me explaining why. Venice has fewer canals than Birmingham, but don't give up on it just yet because Venice isn't as rubbish as you might think. It's about 1,600 years old, made up of 118 islands, mostly man-made, intersected by 150 canals and linked by 400 bridges. It's got a population of 55,000, but that figure is doubled on a daily basis by visitors. Inventions claimed as Venetian include tiramisu and the newspaper, two things I'll only eat if pressed. If you can keep a firm hand on the fiscal tiller, a couple of cats can command a weekend in Venice for approximately five seas apiece. But not if you're for some reason minded to stay in a hotel like the one we've wangled. Why Dubai? Why the Millionaire's Playground? Well, I'll tell you why. Dubai is one of seven states that make up the United Arab Emirates, a relatively new country created the same year as the year in which 1971 took place. A tiny fishing village until the 60s, Dubai exploded out of the desert into a high-rise landscape of shiny megastructures, thanks to the discovery of oil, the fuel that brings only joy. Things in Dubai are, in a very real sense, well massive. So well massive that the Guinness Book of World Records has a Dubai outpost to cope with the influx. World's tallest building, they got that. Largest shopping centre, they got that. Most sound moved with a teaspoon in 30 seconds, they done that. And largest gathering of people dressed as nurses, they got that on lock. <laughs> Fellas prepared to keep a tight grip on their wad can enjoy a weekend in Dubai for around £800. But for the benefit of award-baiting TV, Johnny and I are about to spat ten times that on hotel rooms alone. So, Richard. Yes. Why have you brought me to Berlin? Well, thank goodness you asked at this junction, because we're literally about to cut to the answer. Berlin's incident crowned part has seen it fragmented, divided, and more recently reunified. It has also tirelessly supported David Hasselhoff as a musician and as a storyteller, when many others were writing him off as a spent force. It is currently ranked as the world's third most livable city, and if that entirely arbitrary summation wasn't enough, 127 tonnes of sausage is consumed on these streets every day. You're probably wondering why the heck I brought you to these climbs. Are you wondering that? I wasn't going to ask you till after the bridge, but Richard, why have you brought me to Manhattan? Well, that question is timely. New York, or the giant apple, has a population of eight and a half mil, which makes it America's largest city, housing twice as many torsos as the frankly quaint LA. It's the birthplace of the teddy bear, hip hop, and my desert island must have toilet paper. It contains 10 national parks, 247 museums and art galleries, as well as, in a safety deposit box, Albert Einstein's eyeballs. And Jay-Z recently gave me his personal assurance that the streets here are so good that they will both inspire you and make you feel brand new, alongside some other statements that were basically just boasting. Just one question. Yes. Um, why did you make me fly 6,000 miles to Helsinki? I'm about to tell you. The second most northern capital city in the world, just picked by the first most northern capital city in the world, Helsinki was founded in 1550, one of my favorite 16th century midpoints. Although we owe the Finns an unpayable debt for the ice skates and angry birds, this EPS crucial take-home stat is that Finland has the highest per capita number of heavy metal bands worldwide 
at time of recording. Finland was the first country to adopt full gender equality in 1906. It is also the home to the World Wife Carrying Championships, where first prize is your wife's weight in beer. This is a land that refuses to shy away from paradox. Oh, this is crazy. nice. Thank you. Good temperature. So may I ask, why exactly you brought us to Lisbon of all places? Well, that's a timely question. Lisbon is a city built on seven hills and, as a result, has been given the accurate nickname, the City of Seven Hills. It's four centuries older than Rome, the Milton Keynes of the Mediterranean. And if that weren't enough to make you reassess your entire belief system, Portugal is the world's leading producer of cork. So, Richard, why have you brought me to Naples? Well, I'm literally about to tell you. Settled by the ancient Greeks approximately 2,000 years BC, Naples is 1,300 years older than the embarrassingly nouveau city of Rome and is round full of old shears. The Bay of Naples offers comely coastline as well as the possibility of airborne lava. And the novelist Stendhal called Naples and Paris the two only capitals shortly before he massively failed his geography GCSE. Well, why have you brought me here? I'm going to tell you why. Founded in 59 AD by Julius Caesar, Florence was the Italian capital in the 19th century for an exhausting six years. Famous Florentines include historical heavyweights Da Vinci, Machiavelli, cultural colossi Michelangelo, Dante and Botticelli, healthcare early adopter Florence Nightingale, and clothes enthusiasts Robert Cavalli and Guccio Gucci. We have Florence to blame for the piano, paved streets and Pinocchio, and if that wasn't enough, it also has the dishonour of providing the backdrop for Dan Brown's Inferno. Florence hosts not one, but two Christmas markets. And in addition to the standard shiz, there's a parade on the 6th of January featuring the original Three Kings with their highly specific baby gifts. But because we're filming in October, we will provide no visual evidence of this. Why have you brought me here? I'll tell you why. Founded in 1703 by self-esteem lottery winner Peter the Great, St. Petersburg became Petrograd after 1914, morphed into a post-revolution Leningrad ten years later before going back to its original moniker after the collapse of communism. The city is clustered with over 180 museums, whose collections include items such as Pavlov stuffed dogs and a penis supposedly severed from your boy Rasputin. Perhaps that's why it has been officially festooned with the title Europe's Leading Destination, two years running. So, Richard, why Budapest? A full answer awaits outside of this frame. Budapest was so named on the 17th of November 1873 when three settlements of Pest, Buda and the syllabically surplus Old Buda were united into a megacity. Let's weaponize the Stat Cannon. Hungary is home to 1,500 thermal springs, 450 public baths, eight indigenous grape varieties, and six different types of paprika. It is the birthplace of the biro and the Rubik's Cube, as well as being the very place in which vitamin C was discovered, which makes this something of a personal pilgrimage. But well, Richard, why have you brought me to Tenerife? That is a timely question, which I will now answer. One of seven islands to make up the Spanish archipelago of the Canaries, the sadly seismic landmass of Tenerife bears the pockmarks of its beloved legacy. Long a tourist treasure, it was conquered by the Spanish in the 15th century, became a pit stop for pirates in the 16th, and in the 20th was fatally felled by the full English. In 1797, Nelson famously lost his arm while attacking the island's capital of Santa Cruz, something we should all bear in mind, lest shears kicked off from the cobbles. Miami is a stupidly long way to go. Why, Richard? Why? Well, let's cut to this montage underpinned by a monologue by way of an answer. In 1896, landowner Julia Tussle persuaded a railroad baron to lay a line to Miami, making this, at time of recording, the only major American city founded by a woman. Greater Miami is the largest conurbation in Florida. It has the 131st best drivers in America, but is the second most friendly city for people with facial hair. Floridian first includes air conditioning, sunscreen, and my one-time ally, Gatorade. Miami Beach's beach is man-made and, tragically, near a sea, which won't quit washing it away. In the last year, over a quarter of a million tons of sand have been shoved down to shore shiz up. Actually, come to think of it, why have we come to Rome? I'll tell you why. 
founded by noted brother slayer Romulus in 753 BC, Rome was the HQ of the Roman Empire until 476 AD. If you like old shiz, you've hit the melon farming mother load. Famous Romans include serial expansionist Julius Caesar, screen siren Sophia Loren, and my personal maestro, Federico Fellini. Many Roman inventions have enjoyed a near globular grip. I'm talking concrete, I'm talking the arch, I'm talking the aqueduct, I'm talking sewers, I'm talking books, and I'm talking the bedrock of any civilised society. Public toilets, y'all. Why have you brought me here to Valencia? I'm literally on the way to telling you. Valencia was founded by mini-break pioneers, the Romans under the name Valentia Edesonorum in 138 BC, making it one of the oldest cities in Spain. The principal conurbation on the Costa del Atta R, or Orange Blossom Coast, Valencia is the citrus capital of Europe, producing 1.37 mil tonnes of oranges every annum. And if that stat didn't make you sit up and be counted, there's also the birthplace of Paella. That's right, someone gave birth to Paella right here. Valencianos celebrate Paella Day in March, and perhaps even more importantly than that, won a brutally competitive campaign to get a paella emoji, which was finally introduced in 2016, along with, as we all now know, one for bacon, avocado, and my continuing adversary, the croissant. And tell me, Richard, why have you brought me to Amsterdam? Well, I will tell you. Named after a 13th century dam on the river Amstel, Amsterdam has been the capital of the Netherlands for just over two seas. Famous Amsterdamians include Anne Frank, Rush Boys Rembrandt and Van Gogh, football specialist Johan Cruyff, and one of the biggest physicists on the non-metric scene. I'm talking Daniel Fahrenheit. If you like currentless waterways, using your eyes and mounting the dandy horse, Amster to the dam is the shiz. 60 miles of canals, it's got that. More museums per square metre than any other city, it's got that. Over 800,000 cycles that even have their own mayor, it's got that on bike lock. I'm guessing you didn't bring me here for the weather. Why did you bring me? I did to... bring you for the weather, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you the other reasons what? now. Stock to the home, the largest city in Scandinavia, was founded in 1252, promoted to Sweden's capital in 1634, but was frankly an irrelevance until the formation of ABBA in 1972. Stockholm and its surrounds have poured forth a full flagon of cultural colossi, including a couple of Bergmans, comma Ingrid and Ingmar, Alfred Pride Noble, and headbanded pant designer Bjorn Borg. And if that hadn't broken the camel's back, Sweden is the root cause of dynamite, matches, zips, GPS, Skype, Spotify, ultrasound, the pacemaker, and everyone's favourite tetrahedron storage carton. I'm talking Tetra Pak. So, Richard, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me here, but why Hong Kong? I'm literally about to tell you. <laughs> Hong to the Kong, the 852, or the Pearl of the Orient, was a former British colony until its lease expired in 1997, at which point Chris Patton was returned to a grateful nation. This sprawling archipelago made up of 263 islands is home to 7 mil dudas duking for dominion amongst the 8,000 skyscrapers. That's double that of new to the York. But for reasons that could strike the cynical as superstition, there is no fourth floor, as a Chinese word for four is similar to the word for death. I mean, just change the word, lads. So, why are we going to Brussels? Well, I'm pleased you've asked, because I'm about to tell you. Founded in 979 AD, Brussels only rose to capital status after the Belgian Revolution of 1830. It houses 1.1 mil bods, and if you're ever asked how many visitors per annum it receives, you're to look that photo in the eye and answer 6.8 mil. Belgium is bordered by France, Germany, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and the sea. In short, the joint surrounded, hence its trio of official languages. Brussels has given birth to Hepburn, comma Audrey, Dam, comma Jean-Claude Van, Blue Buffoon to the Smurfs, and Bequiff Bourgeois, Tintin. It's also the one-time home of Antoine Joseph Sax, inventor of the sax horn, and Kenny G's go-to, the saxophone. Why have you brought me here? I'm about to tell you. Gosh, that man was orange. Founded in 1050 by Viking King Harald Hardrada, Oslo was devastated by the Black Death in 1350 and destroyed in a fire in 1624. It was immediately rebuilt in stone and renamed Christiana by the suffix loving King Christian IV. It became capital of Norway in 1814 and was given its current name in 1925. Oslo has also given us the paperclip, significant soft pot rockers Aha, and my long term adversary, the cheese slicer. And according to the number hungry nerds at the UN, Oslo is the best place to live in the world if your jam is low unemployment and a high human development index. What did people do before wheelie luggage? I suppose it was a quieter but more muscly time. Yes. But Richard, 
Why have you brought me here to Madeira? I'm about to tell you. Oh, good. Madeira was both founded and claimed in 1419 by the Portuguese, and is best known for its fortified wine and deeply dense cake. Madeira is roughly the same size as Scarborough, and like Scarborough, Madeira enjoys considerable independence from Portugal and is a semi-tropical island with six distinct climate zones. Also known as the Island of Eternal Spring, previous visitors include transatlantic early adopter Chris Columbus, as well as politician, lateral slurrer, and amateur bricklayer Winston Churchill. It's also the birthplace of Cristiano Ronaldo, who plays football. Why have you brought me to the Côte d'Azur? We're literally about to cut to an explanatory montage. The Côte d'Azur, or Blue Coast, was so named in 1887 by some dude and takes in the tranche of her from the Rhone River to the Italian coast. We're talking Saint to the Tropez, Cannes, Nice and Mont to the Out of the Cove. This thought after strip has a pop of a prop 4.5 mil who wantonly withstand 300 days of rays a year. The bods who've dumped down in this district include the medieval Russell Grant, Nostradamus, a paddle of painters, E.G. Cezanne and your boy Matisse, a tank of Tatchai Formula One type, and high profile xenophobe, Brigitte Bardot. Ducks are cleaner than our tongues. Did you not know that? I didn't know that. That's right. If you lick a duck, you actually come out healthier than before. And is that why you brought me to Zurich? Amongst other reasons, which we'll now cut to. <laughs> Inhabited since the Bronze Age, Zurich was so named because everyone was too embarrassed to pronounce its Roman name, Turicum. <laughs> Famous folks who have commanded the cobbles here include James Joyce, the word guy, physicist and Gerning Hall of Famer Albert Einstein, and Johannes Spiri, creator of Aryan hair hero Heidi. Switzerland has given the world Velcro, milk chocolate, cellophane, my one-time adversary, the vegetable stock cube. Why did you bring me here? The reason I brought you here, Jessica, besides honouring the contracts, <laughs> will be explained in the following montage. First settled in 654 BC by the flipping Phoenicians, the island of Abosim was dedicated to the ancient dwarf god of music and dance, Bez, and, like his Mancunian better, is often depicted holding a rattle. Nostradamus, the poster boy for retroactive clairvoyancy, forecast that Ibiza would be the only place on Earth to survive a nuclear holocaust because of its prevailing wind patterns, something that gives me hope, as I'm also extremely guffy. A visa, as it's purportedly pronounced, has been claimed by the Spanish, the French, Greeks, Romans, and most definitively in 1109 by the Norwegians, an assertion of sovereignty that I still support. Where are my keys? I need to lock the door. Richard Wally, Richard Wally, why have you brought me to Ljubljana? I'm about to tell you. The Slovenian capital has remained hard to pronounce since the Romans named it Julia Amona. 12th century linguist labelled it Leibach before deciding that Lubagana would sit more sweetly on the tongue. But a national surplus of the letter J required the name to be finally changed to Lubniana. L to the J to the Lubniana was according to the lies of legend founded by Jason and his arsenal of Argonauts when, still freshly pumped from his fleecing, he dispatched a dragon at a nearby marsh and for some reason the city has chosen to brand itself after the mythical loser. Famous Slovenians include Melania Trump who emigrated is that the only reason you brought me here? You want more? Well, you're in luck. Founded in 590 by some meandering Celts, Milan is Italy's second city by the size index, earned a tenth of all of the country's GDP, and, in a perhaps related fact, invented the espresso machine in 1901. A Milanese mini-breaker can take her pluck from 800 hotels, 250-plus restaurants, 200-plus bars, 50-plus museums, and 1 plus 1, i.e. two, soccer squads. Milanese not too tight to mention include a phalanx of fashionistas and the next best renaissance man to Danny DeVito, Leonardo to the da to the Vinci, of whom more in the Junus, of course. So, why have you brought me to Jordan? I'm about to tell you. Inhabited for approximately 450,000 years, which is a while, Jordan has been claimed by the Greeks, the Nabataean Massive and the Romans. Approximately 100 years prior to this historic broadcast, the locals hoofed out the Ottomans, aka the Turks, and massively formed the Kingdom of Jordan. Let's rack out some stats. Population, 
10 mil and change. Size, 34,495 square miles, which is decent, bigger than Serbia, smaller than Portugal. Combined 2017 total of goats and sheep, a respectable 3.8 mil. Notable nibs who put sandal to sand include fictional Indiana Jones, the non-fictional T. Lawrence, biblical big shot Moses, and the birthday boy himself, J to the C. Why have you brought me to Athens? I'm about to tell you. Yeah, okay. Athens has been continually inhabited for 3,400 years, which is ages, making it Europe's oldest capital city. Pausanias, one of my second century Greek geographer Hall of Famers, was the first to chronicle Athens as a tourist destination. And if things don't look up, I could be the last. Athens has been well influential on the world, introducing us to democracy, Western philosophy, theatre, political science, geometry and comedy, which your boy Aristotle defined in a book which was subsequently lost. No one has been funny since. Why have you brought me here? You've anticipated a cut. Portugal nicked its very name from Porto, which in turn took its melon farming moniker from the Romans, who called it Porta's Cow. In 1877, Gustav, the Tower Eiffel, designed the Ponte Maria Pier, the first of six bridges arcing over the River Douro. Welcome news for those of us who love to efficiently traverse potentially perilous water bodies. But that's not all. If you've got a savage thirst for fortified dessert wines, Porto's got your ruddy back. So why have you brought me here? Don't preempt the montage <laughs> of all things. In 1154, Arabian cartographer Al Idrisi put Tallinn on the map for the first time when he put it on a map. The joint's been lauded over by Danes, Germans, Russians, declared independence in 1918, only to be reoccupied by the Soviets, then the ruddy Nazis, and a supplementary portion of Soviets before it regained independence in 1991. Creepy dudes may wish to note that in Estonia, women outnumber men at a ratio of 25 to 21, and the country produces more fashion models per head than any other. Finally, it was in this very town that three fun-loving dudes created the software for Skype, and they've been dropping calls like they're hot ever since. But why have you brought me here? Why do you insist on preempting that edit point? I'm sorry. The free and Hanseatic city of Hamburg started life as a 9th century fortress, Hammerburg, before junking one of its A's and becoming Germany's second city. With a harbour the size of Copenhagen, 64 km's of canals, three rivers, two lakes and 26 outdoor swimming pools, it's massively maritime-y, which is maybe good. Famous for hosting the Beatles when they were a five-piece, the city also produced Du Bois Brahms, Mendelssohn and seminal rock funk outfit Randy Pye. And perhaps most crucially of all, it's this city that we have to thank for my poolside peace of mind. I'm talking water wings. The name Dubrovnik obviously comes from the word Dubrava, the Croatian word meaning grove. It's got one of the oldest pharmacies in the world, which is welcome news, found in 1317 in one of the Franciscan monasteries. And there's actually a resolution passed during the time of the Republic of Dubrovnik, meaning that no one can make any council decisions while the wind, Yugo, was blowing. Yeah, yeah, well, everyone knows that already, but why have you brought me to Dubrovnik? Why are you preempting a format point? <laughs> The city formerly known as Ragusa is totally old. Your boy Byron called it the Pearl of the Adriatic. Your gangster George Bernard George said it was paradise on earth. And some stone-cold ballers on TripAdvisor said they might well come again. Over eons, this fortified nook has rebuffed and or withstood some 9th century Saracens, the late 20th century Yugoslav People's Army members, mid-period Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, and a whole throng of contemporary throne heads hooked on sandals, swords and quasi-chivalric copulation. Oh! And why have you brought me here? We're about to cut to it. It's a format point. Founded in 1070 by King Olaf Kiar, Bergen became Norway's capital in 1217 before Oslo trumped it 97 years later. This dump was once described as a city between seven mountains, as a shout out to Rome, though there are actually nine, and according to British standards, eight of them are only hills. Bergen-based notables include your boy Edvard Grieg, Electro Castle Royksdorp, and leprosy treatment pioneer Gerhard Amar Hansen. Happily, Bergen is one of the world's rainiest cities. Between 29th of October 2006 and 21st of January 2007, it rained every day for 85 consecutive days. We've just passed through St. Florian's Gate, one of an octet that lead into the city, this being the most important, and the one through which dignitaries and returning victors would pass in medieval times. It's a symbol of the city, Joe. You can use all the long words you like, Richard. But why have you brought me to Krakow? Don't preempt a format point. 
dating back to the seventh sea, Krakow, 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 or Krakow is Poland's most popular and inconsistently pronounced tourist target, attracting 9.5 mil bods per annum to creep round its cobbles. The city's a sucker for celebration, with annual festivals dedicated to film, jazz, Chopin, Joseph Conrad, Jewish culture, photography, street theatre, and my old enemy, dumplings, of which more in the genus, of course. Luminaries who lollop through the locality include astronomical legend your boy Copernicus, the perennially problematic Rome Polanski, the preeminently papal John Paul II, and Helena Rubinstein, the cosmetics genius who made your mascara waterproof. This opened for business 9th of Feb. 1851 in Tocha Station, Botanical Gardens only put in in 1992, 7,000 square metres. Just missing the T-Rex. In 2015, 108.6 million people came through here, Ellie. Sweet. Is that why you brought me to Madrid? Amongst other reasons. Matt to the Drids, a ridge 865 AD, a.k.a. was mayoris, meaning plenty of waterways. After approximately 600 wasted years, King Felipe II made it capital of Spain in 1561, a title it grips to its breast even now. Madrid's citizens are known as Madrileños, or Gatos, and some cats who crossed its cobbles ink Almodovar, Bardem, Cruz Comapi, and two gens of Inglatiuses. Madrid is the highest capital in Europe, as well as quartering the largest royal palace and oldest restaurant in the world. But, unfortunately, it is also one of the sunniest cities in Europe.